throughout the year not not every week but maybe once a month I practice some other method of making fires and that's just to keep my skills honed I know numerous ways I don't consider myself like a pro not like not like Dave West I mean he's I consider him to be the fire making pro if you want to see a zillion different ways to make fires and he uploads a lot just subscribe or search for him on YouTube but I do practice numerous ways just because it's handy to know in a survival situation being able to make a fire is pretty high on the top of the list and it's not just simply for the fire it's really to regulate your body temperature your core body temperature your core body temperature is very high on the list um, when it comes to the three C's you can live three seconds without hope or faith you can live three minutes without oxygen you can live three hours without uh, core body temperature regulation you can live three days without water. You can live three weeks without food. So as you can see, it's very high on the top of the list. I always want to be able to start a fire. No matter what the situation is, no matter what the conditions are, no matter what I'm faced with, with whatever I have on hand. And almost every day I carry a Bic lighter. That is my preferred fire starting method. You give me a Bic lighter, I can start a fire whether the wood's wet and the, whether it's snowing, whether, you know, just no matter what. But in the event that I don't have a Bic lighter, which would be highly unlikely, or maybe I've only got the stuff to make a, you know, fire with a ferro rod, or maybe I've only got the stuff to make a, you know, flint and steel fire, or maybe I've only got the stuff to make a bow drill or a hand drill. I always want to be able to be able to make a fire. Now the reason why I selected the flint and steel for today primarily is because I did ferro rod just a couple weeks ago. And the other reason is because it rained a little bit today. That means all of this wood that would normally work perfectly for starting most fires now is going to be a challenge because even this grass doesn't sound as dry as it should does not sound near as dry as it looks and same way with the leaves and same way with the sticks when I broke them down so I did try to save some time um, basically what I've got here I've got a steel this is an SA fire steel I absolutely love this thing I've tried I don't know how many fire steels and just stuff I had laying around this thing consistently always throws sparks and not only that if you've got it it also serves um, for a bow drill and uh, it has that dimple there for your spindle and your bow drill. So it works for that also. Um, this right here is a piece of English black flint. Um, years ago, you used to be able to buy us online in great big massive bags for people that use muzzle loaders and stuff like that. And uh, so I just so happen to have quite a bit of it. This right here is a piece of char cloth. I've made a video on how to make char cloth in the past. Um, I basically use like old blue jeans or anything that's 100% cotton. Um, mostly these days it's just old blue jeans. Over here I've got some dried grass. I've got some, well, they're not entirely dry. I have some grass, I have some leaves, I got some smalls, I got some bigger ones. And then I put this uh, pad down out of some larger sticks just to kind of get it up off the concrete. Because I have a feeling this one's going to be a little bit more difficult to start. So when you're starting with a flint and steel fire, the first thing you need to do is make a bird's nest. And a bird's nest is nothing more. You can actually see when I pick this grass up, I folded it over numerous times. When you fold up dried grass, that breaks the fibers in it. But this is not near where it needs to be at same way with those leaves the sticks are probably pretty close but i wanted to show you how to make a bird's nest my recipe that i use may not work for you but it always consistently works for me so for 
And for what it's worth, you just have to try and try and try until you get it right. So I'm going to move this angle down. We will be right back. All right, folks, getting ready to start making this bird's nest. And one of the questions I know that city folks and people that don't practice survival are going to ask is toilet paper was not listed in the three C's, which technically there's four C's because I always add the three seconds, faith and hope. If you don't have the will to survive, you're not going to survive. End of story. So I added that and I've been doing it for years, many, many, many years. And, you know, can't say I'm the person who invented it, but I have added it for a long time. But toilet paper is not something you need to survive, no matter what you say or think. And technically, I've already made toilet paper right here. Right here is your toilet paper when you're in the woods and you need toilet paper. Dry leaves, dry grass, works just as well. Anyways, the way I make a bird's nest is I first start with a lot more grass than what I think I'm going to need. Because by the time I break this down, it's not going to be anything. And basically what I'm doing is I'm kind of breaking it up and shredding it right here in my hand. And you can kind of do it like this. You can swirl it. You can pull it. However you want to do it is fine with me. I do it just however I get the job done. I kind of like vary it. I pull and twist sometimes. Sometimes I twist it. Just however I can get it done. And as I'm doing this, it reduces down to practically nothing. So you always want to start with more dry grass than you think you're going to need. The other thing you got to watch is, if you're really, really sweaty, you probably want to wipe the sweat off of your hands. Because you do not want to add moisture to this grass. And somebody asked me in the last video why I didn't just start the fire in my fire pit, which is right next to where I'm at. And well, that would be cheating. If I started the fire in the fire pit, that would get rid of all side draft wind. And well, to me, that's kind of cheating. I'm not gonna have a fire pit if I need to survive out in the woods. I could probably make something out of rocks or something, but it's just not going to be available to me wherever I go, and I sure don't want to pack one around on my back. And if you do, that stuff where you're, you know, it's, it's fine maybe when you first start out to get the techniques down to reduce the wind just so you can finally get a win. To reduce the wind with a D so you can finally get a win without the D, it would be okay to use the fire pit if you're just starting out. Practice the techniques. Learn how to do it. But then make sure that you do it outside of the fire pit because you will notice it changes really quick. Just something so simple. Totally changes everything up. So what I'm doing is I'm breaking this up. Breaking the fibers up. And that gives any spark that lands on this more chance of embedding itself. And then I do kind of the leaves the same way. I just kind of crush them up. Kind of get this all mixed up like this. Now, I know there's some people that are going to be like, oh, you didn't do that right. But you know what? I said I don't necessarily always do things the way everybody else does. I do what works for me. So here I have kind of like my bird's nest. I put a dimple in it. That dimple is where, right here, is that even in the frame? Oh, my gosh, I just felt a drop of rain on the back of my head. 
Uh, it is definitely raining. Boy, this is going to be fun. This is really going to make it interesting. So I kind of like sunk down the center. What happens is when I do the flint and steel part and I get the spark on the char cloth, you put the char cloth in there. Then you pick this up and you blow in it in order to spread it. So let me readjust this camera and try to get this done before we get rained on. And I'm going to try to do this where you can see me. Now, there are things where some people say that you need to put the char cloth. Some say above your thumb. Some say below your thumb. I don't have a preference. I'm going to be honest with you. Some say above, above the flint. Some say below the flint. I don't really have a preference at all, to be honest with you. I just do it. And however I do it, works, works. You see that little red ember? So now we take this and we put this in our bird's nest. You pick this bird's nest up. We blow on it. Can you see this? Don't get much easier than that, folks. And we put our smalls on there. And that, folks, is how you do a flint and steel fire. Anybody got questions? As always, well, let me not even start with that. Let me tell you some other things. You know, my channel is mostly primarily about homesteading where I raise, grow, hunt, forward, forage, the, where I raise, grow, hunt, forage 80% of all the food that I eat. Now that was pre-cancer. And since I got cancer, I've actually had to let some of the animals go. I will get back on my feet. As you can tell, I'm a very determined person. But... Most of the content on my YouTube channel is about my homesteading escapades. Everything I do with my 70 fruit trees, my garden, the hundreds to thousands of berries I planted, that sort of thing. And just kind of give you some tips on homesteading. But I also am a survivalist and I do practice survival and I have since I was a teenager probably, since I was in the Boy Scouts. So what people call bushcraft now... I've been doing since before, you know, all that got popular the last few years. And there are some things I teach. Um, I'm always open to teach families or individuals or groups of people. And uh, huh, it's actually starting to rain pretty good right now. Good thing I got that fire going. I can stay warm. But I've been doing this a long time and just because I don't post the content about it that often because my channel is mostly homesteading, I do like to uh, to post content similar to this every now and then. And uh, it's not the primary content, but you know, everybody should know how to make a fire and I just thought I would go over all the different ways I know how to make a fire. So as always, God bless you, God bless your families. God bless your homesteads.